Hey everyone, a long time no see. It is Tuesday, February 7th. The time is 5.51 p.m. and I am here not in the Montreal Metro, but rather Castle Frank Station in downtown Toronto. And there you can see 5.51, next eastbound train in two minutes. And outside it's about seven degrees Celsius or so. This feels like the first Toronto video I've recorded in forever. And for this one, I'm going to head on up and go for a walk along the Bloor Viaduct. And that'll take me east out of downtown. And then I'll walk across Danforth Avenue. And I think I'll finish up at a place where I'll be picking up my dinner at Juicy Birds, just north of Pape and Danforth. All right, it looks like I can make it across here. And to the left is the Rosedale neighborhood. And this here is Bloor Street East. And believe it or not, this is my first time outside since early Saturday afternoon. And there's a look to the west. And it seems as if every time I record along this way, I'm on the south side of the Bloor Viaduct. So I thought I would stick to the north side. Not often I get passed by a fellow pedestrian like that. So these cars are making their way off of Bayview Avenue. And before that, they were probably on the Don Valley Parkway. Here's the start of the Blue Viaduct. So this would be the very northeast corner of downtown. And we've got a pretty awesome looking sky up ahead. Normally, this time with the sunset, the sky is a little better in this direction, but I would say it's equally good tonight. It looks like they've got part of the Blue Viaduct lit up. So I got back from Montreal after having my Friday night flight canceled early Saturday afternoon, I think around 1 p.m. And I had come down with a pretty bad cold. And I've just been riding that out at home. That's why there's been no live stream since then, other than my Sunday night one on the Stumbles channel. I didn't want to go out until I was done with the coughing and sneezing and all that fun stuff. goes a go train. And 
it is nice to get some fresh air. I literally didn't step foot outside my apartment. Well, that's a lie. I did once to visit the garbage chute on my floor. I've got a pile of laundry waiting for me. But last week I committed to going out tonight. I often take care of a friend's dog who lives on Danforth, which works for me. I love dogs and this particular one is pretty cool. So I'm gonna grab a meal, head over to that home, eat the meal, then take Charlie out for a walk. I'm walking over is referred to as the Don Valley. There you'll find Bayview Avenue, a rail corridor, the Don River, a multi-use trail, and the Don Valley Parkway. This viaduct I'm walking across is officially known as the Prince Edward Viaduct. And it spans about 494 meters. You can kind of see the CN Tower off in the distance there. And this opened all the way back in October of 1918. As you can see, there's bike lanes on either side. Five lanes of traffic. And underneath, there's two subway tracks that serve Line 2. And it's got these neat little cutouts. And way off in the distance, that little cluster of high-rises is Young and Eglinton in Midtown. And that's where I live. And that's Bayview Avenue just down below. Unfortunately, by 2003, there had been over 500 suicides committed from this bridge. So the city sought to have a solution in place. And the answer is all these steel rods you see hanging here. So these were installed back, I think, around 2003. They cost around five and a half million dollars. The idea was to prevent suicides. And we got this nifty lighting element known as the luminous veil. And there's over 9,000 of these steel rods. I'm not sure why the whole thing doesn't light up. Lately, it seems to be just part of this eastern stretch, at least over the past few years. And the Don River is just down there to the left. There's a trail. Unfortunately, stats showed that after this was installed, there was not a reduction in suicides in the city. Rather, there was an increase in suicides on the subway tracks, as well as the Leaside Bridge, which isn't too far from here by foot. That one does not have a protected barrier. Take another 
look to the west. And the reason I usually walk on the south side is you get a better view of the financial district. the highway dubbed the Don Valley parking lot, the DVP. And you can see traffic is starting to slow to a crawl just north of here. And in about half a block or so, Bloor Street East will become Danforth Avenue. this plaque here to commemorate construction of the Prince Edward Viaduct, along with a distress center sign there. Forward 6408 help is the number if you're in need. sure those aren't supposed to be there. Also, pretty sure that car's supposed to come to a complete stop. Oh well, welcome to Toronto. For all the smack Torontonians talk about Montreal drivers, I can only say I haven't really experienced it as much there in terms of blatant disregard for pedestrians and traffic signs and that sort of thing. They're certainly aggressive. But I wouldn't say they're negligent to the extent that they are here. That's of course anecdotal. I did not experience dry sidewalks at all in Montreal. In Montreal, they're all snow and ice, so this is kind of nice. And here we go, Broadview Avenue. Too far to the south of here is Riverdale Park East. And this is where the 505 Dundas Streetcar and the 504 King terminate here at Broadview Station. see a sign signaling that we are on Danforth Avenue. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean so this is part of a greater area known as Riverdale, but specifically the neighborhood name is Plato Estates. And then once I get past Chester, I'll be in Greektown. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, I'm sure you're very familiar with Greektown by now.
someone on an e-unicycle. Hey, where that Burger King is. It used to be a McDonald's. Should I say where that Burger King was? What is going on? Looks like they've cleared out much of the kitchen. What the heck? Oh, temporary clothes for maintenance. Yeah, that did not make any sense because that McDonald's was always packed. And then when it closed and the Burger King rolled in, that too was always packed. I always kind of guessed what happened was Burger King just sort of out-muscled McDonald's and agreed to pay for a higher commercial lease. So it really made no sense that that McDonald's would close up. And Burger King already knew there was a pretty good market for that type of business in that location. That's just my theory. Why compete with McDonald's when you can drive them out? Although I remember back in university, a professor telling us that one of Burger King's key strategies was to let McDonald's establish that there is a market for fast food, fast food burgers in an area. And then they would just go set up shop in that same area. Thank McDonald's for confirming it would be viable for them. I personally wish you could take the burgers from Burger King and the cherry Coke and combine that with McDonald's fries. We have a pretty solid fast food joint. And I walked right past the Danforth Music Hall. There doesn't seem to be any show going on tonight. That's probably why I didn't really notice it. There's Z80, an arcade bar. That's operated by the same folks who own Tilt on Dundas Street West. Get your free 16 ounce drink with any foot long sandwich. How about you bring back those $5 sandwiches? And the $5 foot long. I know it's not a profitable or sustainable business strategy. I was a fan of it. And long before legalized cannabis was a thing, the friendly stranger has been selling accessories in the city. I think they had a rather famous location on Queen Street West. Oh, it's still there. Speaking of which, the Green Merchant. And since I've been under the weather, 
I have not had any adult beverages or edible treats in quite a while, actually. And there is the Welcome to Greek Town sign. Sorry. She was asking me and then she looked right at the camera and kind of rolled her eyes. Are they llama? Alright, I think it's about time to order the food. And we have entered Greek Town, Chester Station. It's half a block to the north of here. I've mentioned it before, but the signage indicating that there are subway stations isn't very good. I say that as I turn around and see that sign, but that's really all there is. So if you weren't from around town, you wouldn't really know that was there. At least not if you weren't looking at your phone. All right, my order has been placed. Food will be ready at 6.28 p.m. That works for me. There's where Papa's Grill used to be. A popular restaurant just along the street here is moving into that spot. And that's still my favorite place in Greek Town, Messini. There's excellent value to be had there. Their pork hero's pita is very filling and rather affordable. Although I think they raised the price a few dollars recently. I heard that Mezes here was moving into that corner spot. There is Alexandros Takeout across the street. That's a popular Greek takeout spot. They have another location 
down on the waterfront near Young and Queens Key. Although there's a spot right across the street from Pape Station called Soup Lake that I quite like a bit more. It's a bit cheaper, and at least in my opinion, a whole lot better. Friendly Greek. We've got Filipino food. Some of that stuff looks really good. I'm surprised to see Atlantis isn't open. Closed for a private event. They're talking about this place, Ramen Buddha Nibo. That's probably the best ramen I've had in Toronto. Sadly, they didn't have their liquor license when I was there. Yeah, this place is pretty new, Taps. I think that replaced a St. Louis, a chicken and wing place. It's always good to see a non-chain move in after a chain moves out. And look at this. I was not aware this location opened up. Fun guys, medical mushroom dispensary. You know, there's one now on Young Street, just north of Young and Bloor. And one on Queen Street West. Montreal style bagels. I wonder if that competes with Saint Vitour, which I had last Thursday afternoon and it was quite phenomenal.
that's a pretty badass looking church. There's no real supermarkets in this area, but there is Pate Market over there. I think the closest major supermarket would be the Loblaws down by Broadview Station, but that it's probably more expensive than Pate Market. And we've arrived at Pape Avenue. I've always found it weird how just a few blocks towards the end of Greektown, there's a sign that says, Welcome to Greektown. And you can see just beyond that is the thank you for visiting Greektown sign. Well, you could see it if this real estate agent who offers Staging was it blocking the way? I mentioned that place, Suvlake, for Greek takeout. It was just across the street. And I have arrived at my destination, Juicy Bird's Hot Chicken. So I hope you enjoyed this one starting at Castle Frank Station and walking east along Bloor Street East over the Bloor Viaduct and on to Danforth Avenue and through Greek Town. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. And if you wish to support the channel, there's links. Ooh, that's a epilepsy inducing sign. There's links to YouTube channel membership and Patreon membership in the description. I have an Instagram account and TikTok account at Johnny Strides. And I think that's about it. And there's a super thanks button if you wish to say thanks that way. I think I'm still a little bit early for my food. That place is a bit slow to make it, but it is damn good. Got 624. And that is Pape Station across the street, and I was hoping to finish up with a view of that. This brigade of buses had a better idea. Anywho, hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. It's good to be back in Toronto, and hopefully I'm live streaming soon. I will catch you in the next one. Yoink!